been working on this for quite some time. Um, so 2020 is going to be huge in all aspects, not just in the cage, outside of the cage as well. You give us a little tease on what that news is, is going to well, be? Well, I had a whole presentation, cut boards, all types of things, women handing out um, some goodness, but the UC shut it down last minute, you know, how the UC rolled, so I'm a little upset. Um, but I am, I partnered up with a, with a brand that I really like drinking on Mezcal, and uh, I'm launching my own Mezcal. It's going to be available to the public. We'll be in Vegas this year, Miami, Florida, California, and Texas. So we're, we're very excited. We've been working on this project for a while. And I'm not a, I wouldn't hold a press conference if I was a brand ambassador. So before you ask, I'm an owner in the company, and um, 2019 was an amazing year, man. I, if it wasn't for 2019, I wouldn't have been able to, to get these minor details hashed out. No doubt. It, I hear people still talking about your BMF belt. Obviously, you've got it today. There's people out there that want to challenge you for it. I know it's the, the one of one, and it was supposed to be one night and done, but I got to ask you, do you ever see a scenario where you put that thing on the line against somebody? You guys know I'm a gambling man. So somebody wants this one right here, you got to put something up worth collateral, something that it makes me go, yeah, that, that makes it worth me putting this up. I'm not just going to put this up for somebody to win and me to not win nothing after I baptize them. You got to give me something if I end your ass, you know? I mean, it could like financial or, or I, I don't know. It could be financial. It could be it could be many of things. You know, maybe certain individuals don't ever get to speak or do an interview if I whoop their ass the right way. You know, type shit like that. I'll do, I'm, 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 I work for the community, so I know for a lot of us, certain people shouldn't be talking no more. I like it. Well, listen, I'm sure you know that uh, after you today, we'll be speaking with Kamaru Usman, uh, who <laughs> UFC welterweight champion. Uh, listen, I spoke to Dana yesterday, and he said he thinks that's the fight right now to make it 170 pounds is you two guys for the, for the belt. What do you think about that? Do you feel like that's the right next move for you at this time? I, I won't say it's not the right move. It's, Usman's a fight. Connor's obviously flirted with the idea of fighting me. And if, and if me and Connor go in the, in the octagon, what happens? It's one of the biggest fights in history. You know, just by math, proving what, what Connor's been doing. The last couple of fights that I've had, the engagement, the pay-per-views, I broke records with ESPN. So obviously, it's a formula for success, you know. Somebody will always have the belt at 170 pounds. So it, it doesn't really matter if it's Kamal or not. Connor's a bigger fight. Now, if Connor doesn't do his job or Connor doesn't want to fight after his fight, then we're, we're going to take Usman's head off. So in an ideal world, if Connor wins on Saturday night, you'd prefer that fight over Usman for the belt? Yes, for a fact. We, we'd smash up uh, Connor and then... Go embarrass his actor of Usman. And last thing for me, ideally, when whether it's that fight or not, when would you like to fight again? When when will we see you next? Ideally, could be April, could be June, and then after that, we'll get the ball rolling hard and fast. It's just uh, just to make sure my hands are extra, one hundred percent good. I wouldn't want to fight no earlier than April. Yes, Jorge, down here. Uh, when I asked you in New York about McGregor, you seemed a little bit more apprehensive, like you were a bit unsure, but now that's definitely a fight you want. Why? Why is that? What's changed? Well, it's not that it changes. We didn't think he wanted to scrap in New York. We don't, I don't know what his plans are at the end of the day. Um, obviously, I want paychecks. I've been fighting 16 years, going to be 17 now this year. So I want to get the most money possible. I have children to take care of. I have myself to take care of. I, I got many things to do, so I got to make sure that the bank account is well padded. Then after that, whatever happens, happens, you know. And how do you see the main event going down on Saturday? Uh, it's a good one. It could go two of ways, you know. Cabo can make it sick. He could start grappling, wrestling, using his clinch, making it interesting. Connor, I just think, is one of the best guys off the blocks, and, and Cowboy's not. So that's, that could be a recipe for disaster for Cowboy as well, you know. And, uh, you know, Usman was mentioned before. What did you make of the title fight between him and Colby Covington? Pillow hands, both of them. I mean, I know a lot of you, the end result is this guy got his jaw broken, but he got his jaw broken because he's, he's made out of glass. You know, Usman doesn't hit, and that's indicated in his record. I think he has two stoppages. That was his second one. And I give him props that on the biggest night of his life, he, he, he pulled off his second KO, and that's awesome. But if you're asking me from a technical standpoint, we're not in the same playing field when it comes to stand-up, and he knows it. That that man can never look me in the eyes and say, I, I would stand with you. He's going to immediately magnetize on my crotch and, and do what he does, you know, avoid the fight at all costs, but we're ready for that. And then last one for me. Uh, you mentioned that, you know, the big money fights are the ones that you want, for example, the McGregor fight. But I think a lot of people would agree that a fight between you and Colby Covington would probably bring in a lot of money. Is that fight at all on your radar? 
it's not on my radar. You got his jaw broken by the guy that I'm about to baptize. So I, after I'm done with Usman, the world will see the 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 vast. We're not on the same playing field with the skill level, man. We're not. We haven't been since we were in the gym as kids, and we're not definitely now. But the only way I could show that is when I get my hands on Usman. So I'll just wait till that day comes. Jorge, over here to your right. You've been uh, a fighter for a long time. You're an amazing veteran. You fought the best in the world. A lot of people wonder what what allowed you to step it up to the point where you're beating the best. Before you would beat some of the best, you'd come close. Was it the hair, or is it something uh, more significant than that? What's what's made you become as good as you are now compared to, say, five years ago or even ten? Well, five years ago, I was pretty damn good already. I was beating a lot of world-class guys consistently, and I just wasn't getting this, you know. Um, I I stepped back and and I did more math in my head. And by math, I mean every situation that I won or lost in every training session, every every fight, how I felt before that fight, and the results that I got. I I did that over and over and over, and I put a formula together of what the best me is, and I just bring forth that person every time I compete. You know, based on my own experiences and, and the math that I've acquired. How important is the title to you, the the actual welterweight championship? It's definitely important because it, it says that you are the best. I, I don't believe it some of the times. A lot of the times it's just promotional stunts. In this case, it being, you know, I'm, I'm going to prove it. I know there's a whole world saying that Usman will this or that. And me, myself, and I saying, nah, I, I, he's not the champ. I'm, I'm the champ, and I'm going to prove it when we get in there. You know, There's a reason why he doesn't want to fight me, and he says he wants to fight a guy that's ranked under me that he already beat. He says it's a tougher fight. And how many stoppages does that individual that he's talking about have in his whole record compared to mine? You know, you guys ain't idiots, neither is the public. Usman can try to sell whatever he wants to the public, but people ain't stupid, man. You're a fucking idiot if anybody's going to believe this shit. You're saying you already beat that guy and he's ranked under me. How is he a tougher fight than me? Explain what what do you consider a tougher fight, me breaking your face or you possibly beating him? That That's what uh what I guess he's thinking, man, because he knows his time is up. And another thing I'll say while all the press is here, Usman's coaches that were in his corner for his last fight, sparring partners, all that stuff, is my graduating class from American Top Team. I think a lot of you might have known the Black Zillions. They're no longer with us, but they were a part of ATT. They used to be with us. So a lot of those coaches that he has in his corner right now are the same dudes that are telling him, don't fight that guy, bro. He's going to fuck you up, man. We know who that guy is. You know who you are. Fake the injury when the time comes because this one's not going your way. And that's that's really the main reason why he doesn't like to address me because he knows, man, this shit is for real. Do you think Usman is the second best welterweight out there to you? No, I, I think uh, my boy Woodley concentrated, not cutting rap albums, murders his ass. And I'm not even joking, man. I, I know a well-prepared Woodley is a fucking animal, man. Gotcha. Any idea how much longer you'll be in this game? Three years, my brother. Three years, counting this one as one of them. So 2023 is it for Game Bread. Sure. Fantastic. Thank you. Jorge, over here. Other side. Right here. Uh, in New York, you said you want to get your hands checked out after your fight. Is there any update on how that went? They got checked out. I won't be giving no like updates to the media. They're checked out. I'll be ready to compete by April. And then I'm curious what you made of uh, a lot of people bring up your name to Connor, and he said the only reservation he would have is he felt there was unfinished business with Nate. He thought you got the, the fans missed out on a, a, a classic fight. So I'm, I'm wondering what your take is on those comments. I, man, Connor's a very violent person. If by classic it means me just whooping someone's ass to the, to the referee that that's, makes a living off this, says this guy can't continue no more. Look at his face, you know. I'm I'm in for it though. I, I just I won't wait for a rematch or, or a fight with anybody in particular. Once me and my management decide we're going forth, we're going forth. We're not waiting for so and so to get cleared by USADA or somebody to have facial surgery. It's whenever I get cleared, whoever's there that's available for me to fight and get the most money possible, that's whose head's coming off. Easy. Morning, Jorge, over here. Um after the BMF belt, there was some buzz of uh, Nick Diaz. Uh, yeah, I'm over here. Sorry. Uh, what's up? Um, there was some buzz over Nick Diaz. Some people have question marks over if he's good to fight. He's been gone a long time. You guys almost fought a couple of years back as well. 
And when you put a poll out to your fans, he was a popular choice as well. So is he still someone that would be on your radar? Would you be interested in that? And do you think he ever returns? Like I said, I'm not waiting for nobody, man. It's, I'm not waiting for nobody to get clearances, to get in check. I, and I don't want to hear no excuses either when I compete with somebody. I haven't fought in eight years. I need a longer time. When you're ready, when you're when you look in that mirror and you go, shit, I'm ready, man. I'm, I'm ready to climb this mountain. Call the UFC and they'll give me a call. And if my management and me decides that it makes sense, it's on. But me sitting out for anybody in particular, not happening. Especially, I just told you I got three years left. I won't be sitting out for nobody. It doesn't even matter, you know. Jorge, 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 aquí al frente. Jorge, Jorge, ¿cómo estás? Uh, para la gente que, que, que habla español. Uh, lo dijiste en inglés, pero quisiera que explicaras un poquito eh, en español el por qué preferirías... Disputar. <laughs> you usually didn't want me doing this, so I'm going to get some type of fine, but you guys need to check this bad boy out. This is me right here. We've been working on this for a while, so enjoy. There will be a taste testing from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. at the Aria. All you could drink, Annie, I'm going to make sure y'all. I know the media doesn't like me too much sometimes, but I'm going to make sure y'all get taken care of today, man. It's going to be food and drinks, other stuff as well. Ahora sí, Jorge. And your boy will be there. Jorge, lo, lo decías en inglés, pero en español explicar un poquito por qué preferirías eh, una pelea por el cinturón BMF con Conor McGregor en lugar de una eh, en los 170 por el título con uh, Kamaru Usman. Y, y la segunda es, bueno, en su momento dijiste que Ben Askren nunca sería tu amigo, pero han tenido un acercamiento en redes sociales. ¿Sería, ¿Tendría un cambio tu relación con él después de lo que pasó? Eh, primero, me decirle hola a todos los fans latinos viendo y estos son mis mezcales. No se olviden de eso, mi, toda mi comunidad latina. Y no es que yo prefiero a Conor, es que yo prefiero el dinero. La pelea de Usman no, no, no va a generar lo que Conor va a generar en ningún día del mundo. So, esa pelea viene primero por, por el dinero, por meter dinero en el banco. Después de eso, el que sea. Pero si los dos fueran el mismo dinero, yo le arranco la cabeza a Usman porque es una pelea fácil para mí, estadísticamente. Y lo de Ben Askren, yo, yo siempre lo he dicho, nunca ha sido nada personal, todo negocio. No, no seríamos amigos tal vez, pero yo no le deseo nada mal. Yo quisiera que pudiera lograr todos sus sueños. La última pregunta, ¿por qué pensar en el retiro en tres años ahora que estás en tu mejor momento? Llevo 16 años, voy para 17 ya este año peleando y yo sé que ya a los 39, 38 años ya, ya es todo lo que yo quería hacer en esta fase de mi vida lo voy a lograr hacer para esa edad y ya no va a haber más nada que hacer ya les he dado en ese entonces ya 22 años de combate al mundo entero yo creo que hice mi deber Jorge down in front um, I'm just curious since November what's kind of the baddest motherfucking thing you've done oh, we couldn't discuss there's cameras here man we couldn't discuss that shit you want me to go to jail man And then uh, for the mezcal, you do uh, you do the worm or no worm? I do the worm. I love the worm. It gives a nice silky taste. It's uh, both of them a little smoky, but the the worm gives it a little bit less smoky taste. I love it with the worm. And then you eat it after for like eight years of good luck. So. Jorge, over here. Uh... MMA, the term MMA has the word arts in it. It's described as an art by some, but you seem to use the word violence a lot to describe what you do. How did that come to be? Why do you use that word? I, I would say it's like a beautiful violence, violent art, something like that. Because it's definitely art. I got to think of a move that will work well to land against you, and then I got to display it on your face for the whole world. So I'm definitely an artist. We're all artists in there. Just, uh, we come from a very violent place, I would say. Using violence, do you think that helps your brand, your image, promote yourself? You, using violence in the cage, I, I'm not. I'm not saying for regular people to to be violent and stuff. But in my world, the most violent I am is is the only thing that separates me from the next person. Because maybe you are, but most people here is only paying for violence. They ain't, they're not paying for this talking stuff. They're not paying for me to post pictures of what I'm eating or how strict of a lifestyle I lead. They're paying for one thing. On that Saturday night when they want to just let their mind go and just be entertained and have fun, they're paying for violence and nothing else. And if if you think otherwise, I guess we're, we're looking at different. But the more violent I am, the more people love it. And if you don't believe me, go look at that Ben Askren fight. It's a little long, so you're going to have to have patience. But you could tell in there, people just love violence, man. They just want to see that. They want to see people get hurt. I'll oblige them. I'll do it. And lastly, the salsa dancing that you did as a child, how did that impact you in the octagon? How has that 
Do you think it's improved your skill set? I, I wouldn't know what it's like um, not to have those, I guess, skill sets because it's just like a fan. It's a cultural thing. You know, you, we're just we're at a at a party since a young age and you learn how to dance. And then your parents are dissing and you're like, oh, you don't got those moves. You come back like three, four years from now. So I just grew up doing side saw by child or something. So that just uh, I ended up in that tournament. It wasn't that many competitors. I'm not going to take that much pride in it, you know, but I won and and it was fun, man. I love to do it. It definitely helps in in. in in fighting, because fighting is rhythm, it's patterns, it's setups, it's it's putting traps, and dancing is all rhythm. So it definitely helps you out tremendously. Boy, right in the middle. Uh, what do you make of Connor at one seventy? Do you think he's kind of out of his weight class fighting at one seventy? Uh, he has some gifts. I think his power won't be out if he touches the anybody at one seventy with, with a good clean shot. They'll feel it. You know, they they won't be like uh, walking through him. Strength-wise, he might be oversized, you know. He could be. I haven't seen yet if he's, if he's really developed into his body at 170. And we're not going to see that with Cowboy because Cowboy's not a physical guy at 170, taking guys down and grinding them out. But I think we'll still be able to see his speed and power. Definitely what he'll bring is is that speed from 145, you know. The same way that at 70, I feel like I'm the fastest guy, but I also come from 155. So I've seen some of the faster guys on the planet. I, I've never seen a, a 70 guy that was just out of control fast, you know. Raider Stadium is opening up, and I know you're not waiting for a fight, but what would a fight with Conor at Raider, Raider Stadium mean for you? Oh, it'd be huge, man. 60,000 people, I think it's it, or something like that. It'd be huge just to break the box office there and, and pop that cherry would be huge, you know? I mean, I'm not waiting for nobody, but if contracts are signed and the right money is in front of me, yes, I'll, I'll wait for an event like that. Fight week, international fight week or something like that, but a contract would have to be signed, th things of that nature, you know? That's what I mean by not wait for nobody. I'm not going to hope that somebody's in shape by November of this year and then maybe I get a fantasy fight. No, no, no. Things have to be signed in place. People don't show up to fight. Well, you got to still pay me type shit, you know? Last question. Uh, I know you're not waiting for anybody, but if the opportunity were at the same time to either fight Kamaru Usman for the title or Conor McGregor, which would you choose? Is it a money thing or is it a title thing? Okay. It, like I've said, it's a money thing, right, at first. But if I'm getting paid in food for the both of them for some reason right and it's the same food I like Connor what he does in the ring I like I like all the eyeballs he's brought to the sport I like him more as a person Usman I can't stand him man I can't stand that dude I'll be honest with you so I'll pick Usman all day but it's business right always especially for me so I'd pick Connor in the real life but if it's all the same potatoes and tomatoes I will break his fucking face man and in a violent way. It just, and it's just, I, I, I don't like how he's been playing. At first, I, I came at him with a lot of respect. And uh, now he's been talking too much shit, bro. And I just want to shut his mouth up. That's it, you know? Where it's your, it's your left over here. What is, what is the name of the mess call? Recuerdo. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Uh, you could say it, though. I got faith in you. Come on. Can you repeat it? Recuerdo. No, I can't do that. Yeah, you can. And I can't. Uh, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Uh, uh, you said that April would be the the mo the earliest you can come back. Uh, Connor said yesterday that March is is something that he has on his radar if he beats Cowboy quickly on Saturday. Would March be too early for sure for you? We'd have to talk. I have a I have a firm behind me. I have coaches behind me. They know as well. They would just say yes or no, you know. And then whatever they would say, I would do. We were thinking April, but if the chips fall into the right place, maybe yes, maybe not. You know, we're not in a rush either. Any talk about going to the cage, maybe, if, if Connor wins on Saturday? You guys do a little face-off, anything like that? No, nah, I'm, not, nah, I'm not doing that. That's that man's spotlight. Whoever wins that day, I'm not, I'm not the type of dude to jump in the cage or try to see his light. Let him have fun and enjoy his night, man. I'm just there to watch as a spectator. And as a fan, bro, I love fighting, man. You said that if you were to put up the BMF belt, Connor or someone else had to put up something else in exchange. So a perfect ideal world for you. What would Connor put up if that belt's on the line? This one here in particular, yeah. I actually gifted this one to my father, so he, he's uh, very fond of this bad boy. We actually have to ask him permission to take it out. So I'd have to sit down with my dad and be like, what? Because he's a gambling man as well. And we just had to ask him, yo, what do we want to take from this fool? Because he wants his belt.